Like, and... Balmus is here. Look, Ready want, to play it... their top eight qualifier set. Wanted to be fashionably late, you know, had to had to cut their promo, get ready for it. Cut their promo. Yeah. Their own Rush Showman. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, but getting into the thing of it right here, uh, Fio, I'm just gonna assume it's just gonna like up back away. Yep, I knew it right out of the gate immediately. I got hit by that on that play too. I get hit by that on that play too. I'm free to that on that play. These two players are carried. They sure are, as well as right now, carrying them all the way to the corner right here. Really trying to control them down. Finds a good hit, but can't find the full extension. Right blocking. Oh my god, gets clipped right as they try to jump out. You hate to see that, but the drop combo! Does it matter? Do you know how to deal with this? No, oh. you don't get a hit with this 5A. Standing lows right here, gonna close first round out with a perfect as long as you keep it tight. Yeah, the dealing with that, you can just down back. She has no highs out of that. Mm -hmm. Just down back to- oh! oh! Bro, he was stuck with the Nickelodeon slime for an eternity there. Mm -hmm. Reactions right there, just continuously keep rolling down. Like, Balma's not really getting a chance to even get any part of their game plan started right here. Let's find a tech. It gets a 6 to C. Feel the corner. Started. Oh, no tech, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a great throw there. Just went for the biscuit, does end up getting it, and get the Vorpal Cycle as well. Tries to go for the funny stuff with the elbow. But no Balmus tech. ready for it. <sighs> Alright, let's see what Balmus can do right here. You're just gonna hold this? No, you're gonna uh, try to DP, but Lena spaced out right here. Should be able to close it out. Has all the resources in the world. Thank you. Just press the button. Okay, yeah, I almost screamed. I, I, I almost screamed. She was gonna get several ads in the disc in Discord. Yeah. If, if she had dropped that right there, but she didn't. She knew what she was doing. That's why she took that first round. And is only looking a couple games away from making that top eight spot. God, almost almost pulled the the Lufel, Except I well, I didn't know where that was gonna go. You had all the time in the world to press all four buttons. You don't even need to press all four. You press three. Yeah. You don't have to press, press the D button. One for style. Not when you have 100% health like Alina had right there, so let's see if they can keep that up. Our bombs can try to make something happen, but immediate air to air is going in Lina's favor. Back hit of the Rekka, though, gonna start to work out. No, Rekka in response to the teleport might be the best OS ever mashed on the plus eight throw tech. Gonna be a great hit for Balmus right here, and now the hide gameplay begins. Yeah, gonna be locking him down. Let's see if you can get out of it. No, we'll just creeping edge, at least just let it set back to the mid screen, but we're gonna get clipped with the half charge oh. force function. He tried to go for, he didn't read his bounces, and he tried to go for the more extended route there, ends up dropping it. That could have been a huge damage starter. Now you got clipped low yet again. Lena coming back into this round, one hit away from taking it. Yeah, I'm almost looking a little bit more confident though this time, but not confident enough to find the opportunity to tech these throws right here. I mean, I should be able to close this round out right here. One thing I wanted to, to ask about is the, doing Rekka as a response to Teleport Cross. If you input a 623, does it autocorrect to DP if it's same side? Uh, I don't think so. Because I, okay. I, I mean, how fast is Teleport into follow up in that situation, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't have. Because how fast the turnaround would be on autocorrect. And I've seen this game do some whack things with autocorrect. Oh, sure. What <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Put the meter on it. Next hit does kill. We do have Celestial. This will be enough yet again. The teleport cross up paying the bills. And Lena moving on a top eight winner side. And yeah. we closed our game. Hot, hot minute. So knows the Hilda experience. Has played against a lot of the Hilda grinders. Uh, I don't know how much in like Uni 2 experience they directly have with Hilda, just because Uni 2 Hildas are fewer than they were in previous versions. So let's see if they can know the, the gimmicks that will come here on out, or if Deerskin can make it happen. I mean, you got to go against probably the best walls in the States right now. Definitely mm -hmm. the one with, you know, the most consistent results. The one showing up always, and the one probably doing the most lab work for the character in this version. Oh yeah, well, it has been for a long, long time, been one of yeah. the most dedicated labbers, and you can see it. Like they know their patience, right? They just have to hold them down back. They just have to find the opportunities where they can walk, oh. and hopefully not get clipped like that. But Deerskin can't make a big opening right here, so Tannison gets an opportunity to close the distance. Oh, but hey, what is going on? No, you can't be dropping like that against Wald. Give Tannison a chance to get in. It's gonna be real scary. 
And you can see Tannison right now is basically just slow walking. Either I'm going to drag you to the corner as soon as you try to teleport out. I'm going to oh. just, like, react and get ready for it. But they instead found the opportunity to close the distance right here. And this is very scary for Deer Skin. <gasps> He's... I knew he was going for something real funny. With 623 into the 360C. He's got memes of his own. He's ready for... Oh, tried to catch the teleport, but just slightly too spaced out. All right, we got a knockdown. Roomba time? Nope. No, Roomba wants to keep the meter on deck, but Tannison will find its opportunity to CS, but also find the opportunity to get clipped right there. You're just yeah, the did, didn't block after the step dash off of 2C. So that is going to go to Deerskin, but so much meter on the table for both characters, which means chaos can ensue, and we might be able to see an electronic vacuum. Yeah, hopefully we do, we do see the Roomba come out. We get to see more opportunities on that mix that we can get, which you'll be seeing right here. Finds a green shield, but no punish afterwards. Oh, no, you were not close enough to have that 360 work. Yeah, 360B is definitely interesting there. And I mean, there is, you know, the opportunity arises when you can catch a normal out like that with 360B. We've definitely seen it before. Nice 3D to get out of the gloom setup, but she's airborne off of the FM. And no, that could have been the combo to kill. Ah. Uh. Yeah, but once right. again, Deer Skin has the held is a little bit fresh. You're not as ready for those big confirms as of yet. Tannison gonna take advantage of that. Finds the up back with the dive kick to close it out. Deer Skin taking game number one. Tries to go for a little too many memes, and Deer Skin immediately ready with the up back out because 360 C is not frame zero. So you can mm -hmm. actually react after Super Flash with jump because jump itself does have throw protection. Um, on startup, so definitely one of the ways to deal with command grabs if you're ever having an issue. But game number two, let's see what adjustments Tannison can make. Yeah, like you were talking about, like Tannison having to go for some of the like funnier options, but I kind of think like you have to do that versus Hilda, right? Because if you just allow her to run her game plan as Deerskin's now doing, they're just getting a ton of reward out of it. Ooh. Yeah, that hit hurts. The grid break hurts even more. The slow meter gain. Drop combo though, but we still get the 5AB ender. Nice block and the shield on the FF is a huge open up for Tannison right now. It's gonna build that 100 bar and then we have a fight for the Vorpal Cycle. Yeah, Deerskin though, just gonna pop it knowing that they're probably not gonna be winning this here and maybe make an opportunity. Roomba is out though. CS will keep you safe a little bit more, but you got grid broken. Don't VL. Please don't VL. Maybe VL. <laughs> <laughs> VO is very scary right there, right? And like you saw Tannison, I think, was just trying to like look for a quick little overhead check. And you're just gonna find an opportunity to strike throw a little bit better right here and finding a good opportunity to get these skewers out. Oh wow, that 3D was like super late, but also super on point. Mm -hmm. Oh the wake up 623. This is going to be a huge combo and a lot of damage. Yeah, didn't retain the corner right there though. Yay. I love knowing when walls are going for a reset. Six years of fighting this character at my locals. You'll love to see it. Yeah, and Tannison's loving to see where they're at in the game right now, right? Like, this has been what they've been looking for. This hill is the are not that strong once the walls got you locked down. That just killed. 2200 damage off of the command grab. All right, we have some life in us. Still set point for Deerskin, but Tannison still has some life. Oh, 2B not gonna work. I'm loving these back dashes from Deerskin. Hopefully Tennyson can find an opportunity to like find the counterplay to be able to beat that and get ready for it. But right now, we'll just 360C in this pressure game. Yeah, we found the counterplay. Vorpal 360C that is gonna give Tannison the chance to play the game. Deerskin tried to get out even with the red beat. We still get a full combo here and the Vorpal cycle. Yeah, that, that 3D is not gonna go. Don't give me that! Oh. Yeah, I was ready to catch the grid break right there. Will VO though, just to maintain safe. No free loom right here, but we will get a Roomba set and find the combo off of it. Deer skin can't make a big route happen though. So Tried to, to go for the zone. 4B off of that teleport, and I like the idea, but a little too slow. Mm -hmm. Oh, too far. I do like that, yep. like Chung Deerskin's already ready for this. Now Tannison needs to find a new layer to catch him, and that layer's overhead right there. Tannison tying it up. Listen, that's, I mean, that's one of his best tools for dealing with characters that want to stay out of his normal range. <laughs> I mean, you catch, you catch Hilda whiffing anything and 236 is right there to whip punish it. It's the same thing for Gord. It's the same thing for Yuzu. Um, 
236 is definitely one of Wald's best range tools to deal with whiff punishing. Absolutely, yeah. It's definitely something that I've seen a lot, even in like when you just try to space them out and catch reactions in some of the more like, uh, like in fighter style characters. It still has a lot of use to catch them out if they're trying to back off, get ready for that grab. All right, back to the far neutral, shoot a gloom for free. Yeah, so just playing, trying to play as patient as possible, right? Trying to find opportunities where they can. Almost stole the cycle right there, but he just clicked over for deer skin right at the best time and catching the teleport right there. Oh my god, wow. The slight walk back to avoid the rest of it. The 2C is going to work out. No Vorpal cycle, though. So Tannison does have some room to work with. That's meter gain. And that is big right there. You try to use these creeping edges to catch this preemptive zoning, but deer skin just playing patient right now. Oh, yo, he's so good. The micro walk forward to build enough grid right there was insane. He's so smart. He's so ready for it. Oh, misses this time. So you're going to get caught with the pin that was charging, apparently. <laughs> oh, the backdash there to avoid the EX clap. Great yeah, stuff. Deer's getting very aware. Yeah, but wasn't ready for that follow-up that was coming through right now. Trying to find these more aggressive options to get out of there, like these instant wake-up PK dive kicks. But Tannison just going to lock him down once more, try to go for a reset, but Deerskin ready to press. Deer's going to real mash or give me that. Yes, DP out of here. Immediately when you saw the red, you knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Tannison seeing red right now as they're all sitting at themselves at match point. Counterplay to what we saw last time, but Deerskin trying to get this uh, early round started back up for him. Yep, the delayed wake up to avoid the Roomba. Great tech. Yo, the delayed dash with the 2B to catch the back dash. Realizing how much Deerskin likes the back dash. Reset. Try yeah. it with the God Press. Charge Fights, he still hit that there. I was not expecting that uh, to go into Deerskin's favor. It doesn't look like they were either. <laughs> There's the whip punish. Found it. 236C to get the whip punish. This is. Did an insane amount of damage. 4K and a guess for game! Yeah, that's gonna be it. Command grab CS. Baited you with the down back shield. Probably not what he wanted, but we take those in. Lena like, has it a Kotsky. It was a character they played to try to improve the like strike throw on Yuzu originally. So they know how this character functions. They know how you want to think with them. So it's really, I think, up to Catalyst to try to like overcome that gap against what Yuzu can bring. We've seen them do it before versus other Yuzus, but maybe not ones as strong as what Lena uh, is. And we're seeing some yeah, good aggression, with, though. The issue with Catalyst is that... Sometimes he blocks, and then sometimes he mashes every single correct button that works. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of the most wild Akka that I've seen. Okay. Okay. Yep. Doesn't have doesn't have the extension yep. often, but speaking of wild Akas, I think it's a perfect yep. interaction right perfect there. Perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Now we're out. Yep. We're not out. Yeah. Lena has like some really, really confident 2A presses in a lot of these situations. We saw a lot in the first game, but this is something that like I've experienced watching a lot of them, uh, a lot of their gameplay, right? Like they're very willing to just like 2A check and very willing to go for these throws, knowing that they can get the big grid breaks right here. They know that leads into a, a much more consistent user reha game plan. We got the VO bait though. You got traded? Nah. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, wild well, Naka. We're just, we're just donating. Thanks, yeah, it's, you know, season of giving, right? Yeah, tis, tis I'm, the I'm, season. <laughs> yeah, tis the season to give you 200 meter. Oh, but tis the season to press into my parry right there is what Catalyst is thinking right here. Finds an opportunity to get a little micro charge to try to steal the cycle. And we'll find it with that shield right there as long as Lena doesn't get it. Oh, they get a grid break. Yeah, Lena in a huge lead right here, especially on the meter side. Catalyst doesn't really have a lot of options to get out. Doesn't have meter parry either. Lena with the great spacing there to avoid the assault. J6C and oh, whoa! Oh, I love that. So they they saw the red flash coming, but knew that they were in a little bit less recovery right there. So just went for a delay follow up, knowing Catalyst wanted to press that parry right there and got a full round off of it. Yeah, great stuff to Lena. Got a read on Catalyst right now, and you know, might be one of the new people to put Catalyst down into losers this early. We'll have to see. We'll have to see if they can keep it up or if Catalyst can make the comeback. But right now they're thinking, like, okay, you know, where's the timestamps on the VOD? How do color. I deal with this? We're changing color, 100%. They going Super Saiyan? No! no. 
Last time, last time they waited, I think they were fighting Luffel, they ended up changing colors. Hmm. Um, no, maybe. Maybe I, I, maybe we there's got someone some I think it was uh, it was Salty, actually, who I was talking with. This was like a year ago where he changes colors to replicate other Akatsuki players to treat it like he's doing VOD review to play better. Interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I do, I'm not going to lie. I do that, too. Sometimes I'll pick Giuseppe's color because he's yeah. still, you know, the best North American Gordo to ever grace the game. Ooh, <laughs> the throw to steal a Warble Cycle is crazy. But, like, Lena's throws have been super on point in all of these games I've been playing today. Oh, big parry, but no punish on it from Lena right here. Let's just time to see us conversion right now. Ooh, great shield. Gonna get the side switch. No! Yeah, that drop combo actually really hurts, because now you have to play neutral again. But these shields have been going great to try to steal the cycle, but these oh. teleports are going to do even better for the user, Riha. That's all the need on deck. No cycle, though, but should guarantee the round. One round away. Might be one of the quickest winner side top eight matches we've had here on TNS. This but is it all the quicker, down to this. It's one of the quicker winner side top eight matches I've seen, like, kind of period in the right? Like, yeah. Uh, Lena plays a very aggressive Yuzu, both, like, I don't know, their pressure just feels a lot more active that you traditionally see from a lot of user rehouse and you're seeing them get great reward out of it here versus Catalyst, but Catalyst finding a CS and finding the opportunity to press with that 2B to get the party started. What a mash. What mash? Speaking of, Jesus, the 2A tried to mash on the Bitatsu Fireball. We did take the Vorpal Cycle though, which is big. So meter on deck, oh, use the whiff off the 6B right there with the no punish to DP and tries to DP once more with the 2-2C, but it's not gonna work out. You know, tries to back. catch an extended hurt box, which is brave on a character like Yuzu, who lacks a lot of those. It beat it. Well, I guess it is in Mom, but it beat yeah. it. Oh, it oh. actually caught the B-Tatsu startup. Lena, 2-0 over Catalyst to move on to winner's finals. B-Tatsu ends up losing to the two. No, way. no, no way. No but, way. You know, the potential for like one or two grand finals games to pick the Akka just to say that it was there. And then we get another Akatsuki thumbnail for the YouTube video. Yeah, and we can have the top eighter be just like only Akatsuki's there and everyone's be like, what the heck? <laughs> the title says Under Night 2 Tournament and then in the parentheses just says Akatsuki, 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 Akatsuki. <laughs> oh. Just his but, face. No, it, it would make for good, it would make for good clicks. It's how you, get, it's how you get the people going. Kabutori. Yeah, speaking of getting things going, Havard right there, like, finding a couple interactions not going in their favor at first, but once they got him locked in the corner, Akatsuki doing the crazy things, tries to catch him with some fancy overheads, but Tannison's ready for that, and ready to hit him with the 360C. Yeah, tried to go for the freaky TK Fireball CS. Nah, you don't see a lot of Akas do it. It is a very committal option, and obviously you're using CS, potentially on, you know, a Bitatsu, or even like an EX Fireball, or a, things like that. That could be better. Wow, tried to catch the backdash with a 2-1-4-C there. Brave, but Akka very far away. Oh, hey. Yeah, but these 360 is gonna work. Like, Havard showed very early, like, hey, I'm gonna try to do some air shenanigans, and Tannis and showed that they were ready for it. So Havard said, okay, back to the ground, and you're gonna die for it. Yes, you are. Gotta put some meter on it, but this is enough to kill. Tannis said taking game number one, or game number one, round number one. I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now, trying to get ahead of the tempo right here, but Tannison fighting these good shields if they can, but that was a great MTJ succeed. Ooh, I like the patience there. The Atatsu right after, great patience, pa uh, patience from Tannison. Does have the meter now. Hey, 360C again. How many times are we going to see that this set? Uh, one, two, three, at least four and a half. Oh, you're the GOAT! He's the GOAT! Oh, no one was ready for that except for Tannison right there. Oh, but grid break back of uh, back on Havard's own end. Oh, wow. The back throw, haven't seen that in forever. The 60 to catch the body splash. Both players playing on Cloud9 right now, but it is going to be one more interaction for Havard to take it. One more 360C potentially. 
Yeah, we'll have to see him clutch it out. Just a good old toss back in. Tannison gonna use that to win the cycle as well. So Havard has to make something big happen here. They do have the life lead, but the 30 seconds is still a ton of time. Keep jumping. 360C though. Ooh, okay, great recognition nope. there with the parry. Just needed a little bit of damage and the parry follow-up is gonna do it. Tannison's gonna think twice about doing a normal like that again with the 360B. Hubbard clearly watching Resha wanted a little shade of stunage YRC right there. And now gonna be trying to use that a little bit more, but Tannison finds the anti-hair after all those jump-ins. Yeah, great 2C into the 2A rebeat, gets the counter hit and a huge damage combo. 360C with the double circle, which means we get better Oki. Also ate a lot of time on that clock to try to steal the cycle. Havard VO to take it back for themselves, but Tannison still able to keep it. Oh no, you thought you had it. We get infinite worth here. No, nope, doesn't go for it, but gets a double circle. Oki bets it all on a 2-2-B. Tannison with game number one. Yeah, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Like, you kind of have to put yourself in a, like, a very gambly situation to get out of that. Because if you just down back, you know, dash 360, it's over. So, you have to you have to take your gambles. And unfortunately, the house won in that situation of our Tannison. Going to be looking good going into this one. One. Jesus. <laughs> Jump back. Jeez, crazy. Another parry on the 6C. Uh-uh-uh. So you can keep it up. Oh, great jump out because they expected that feint to come through, but Havard still finds good grid break, staggering these 5As. That was the most 2A 5A string I've ever seen from Aka. Yeah, keep, just keep Tatsui. Ooh, what a mash. No mm. tech! Push Get those push-ups in. Uh -oh. oh, no. You can't do that. You can't do that. You may have that new charge fireball, but it still loses to, to Geyser Wave. <gasps> Tannis a real sw a fly swatter energy right now with his decisions in neutral. I mean, it's kind of like what you have to do versus Akatsuki, right? He's going to be moving around the screen. He's going to be staying very agile to try to get you to make a committal option and punish it. But, you know, and once Havard finds those options, they're making it work. Once again, Whoa. making it work with the Assault JC right there. Super late. Oh, but it doesn't actually end up killing, which could be really bad. Doesn't matter. Another step dash. 2A is going to take it. And a Havard one round away from trying to set up. Clap trying to stay plus right there. Throws out the wave as well. Havard getting clipped by allowing Tannison. A little bit more momentum going in their favor. Has the anti airs but not the extensions. I like the jump normals to avoid or to get rid of the fireballs here. It's been really good for Tannison. Oh, baits out the VO from the distance. And it's going to really hurt for Havard because now we have liquidated meter and a potential loss on the Vorpal cycle. No, ends up winning it. Pops the CS very early though, so won't get any of the meter off of it and no punish with the IW, but Tannison can't punish. Not like this. Tries to catch the whiff punish, spending all your meter on an infinite worth, shades of Catalyst. But Tennyson, one round away, 200 meter. So that situated you a little better because it was it was on like the last frames of Vorpal or uh, CVO. Oh. Did you beat? Oh, oh did No way. Yeah, Havard kind of. What? Yeah, caught him, like, reached. it was right at the tip of the range and, like, getting thrown into, I think they were trying to look the back dash right there, but while wow, they were still charging, accidentally got caught. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Wow, that just killed. <laughs> those four buttons, those two, <laughs> two or three normals did 3K in and of itself. It did, it, it, it did, like, 675 bonus damage. Ah. Uh, it was know, not yeah. the Ryoji function. She was not, no, but we do have our uh, our ninja function here in a mirror match. Seth v Seth, Shades of Ultra Street. Oh, I can do this. I don't know. Anyways, we're here in Undernight. Great start for Divine Sleep. I'm actually curious who they beat to make it all the way here. Uh, They had to play... Uh, Atari? 
And a couple, yeah, just a lot of names I'm not super familiar with. Almond beat Rakesaw. Uh, Riv beat Deerskin. So there's one right there. Great stuff well, there. Two sets, top eight. This thumbnail is going to look amazing. Yeah, and right now this game looking amazing as well. Both these Seth players trying to find opportunities to open each other up. Normally Seth players are pretty good at like finding these big, uh, you know, mix-ups, but when both players are familiar with exactly how the character wants to function, it can be uh, a little bit scary. You're trying to catch it with that 623B, but yeah, not gonna what a work great out. 5A in response though. The so 5A immediately into the confirm. Great stuff there. Great awareness. Gonna get the free orb set up off of the EXDP Ender. Yeah, but guard thrust out of it saying, hey, I don't want to deal with this at all. Trying to mix them up, and they finally find one right there. Riv's yeah, going to be knocking the back of the corner. Great amount of damage. Are we spending the meter here? Yes. Oh, it actually dropped too many bounces, but 5cc doing my taxes. Excellent, excellent stuff right there. Good techs out as well. And a dive going to connect as well. Riv looking very, very confident now after those last couple of interactions. Woo! The command grab. We had, we had Azure last week command grabbing everybody. Let's see if, uh, see if Riv or D uh, Divine Sleep can be able to replicate that right here. Instead, they're just going to be replicating some classic pressure right here, catching them out and closing out the round. Great stuff there. Both 200 meter on both sides, so stick a butter on both ends. But Riv, one match away from going in to loser's quarters to fight Catalyst. Yo, Riv versus Catalyst, the, the Mexican standoff. Yeah. I mean, they're both from Mexico. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> what did, did you, that, did do you that... think I was just saying it? <laughs> No, I had I I, li I couldn't remember if Catalyst was from Mexico off the top of my head or not right now. Yeah. I'm just gonna be honest. I was I but yeah, yeah. Catalyst yeah. won um Astral run... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know there's like some some people, Seth players just immediate round start uh, back orb. Love to see it. That that's me playing. Jesus, that's me playing uh Alco in Kirk Code. It's just up back orb. Truly, just immediate up back orb. <laughs> These teleports coming out for both these players trying to find a big opening. You know, I Divine Sleep found the first one to lead him into this corner, but Riv able to steal and open him up back to back right there. Yeah, that, that 6C it actually hit at such a weird timing that I thought, like, he was supposed to fall to the ground, but it just kind of bonked him on the head. Yo, the $10 donation from Luca. Big up, shout out. He'll be on stream next. Absolutely, man. Uh, if you're in the chat, hit that Macherino up. Claim those codes at least if you can't donate. But if you can, try to feed these players' pockets. I'm trying to make it work right here. Oh, CDP gonna whiff right there. No comment? Yeah, I don't know if Divine Sleep actually knew. Yeah, Rising JA. I don't know if they actually knew that the that um, Riv had already crossed over, so the DP was actually gonna whiff. Mm -hmm. But hey, they found a hit here, and then they found the knockdown. They can keep it up right there. Command grab gonna connect with the orb, but we can't find the full connection. Just Do it another orb set. Do it again. Oh, yo, five. Was that stagger five CC? Yeah, that was stagger five CC. Filling out those W twos right now, making sure those taxes are very solid. Yeah, there you go. That's the turbo tax for free button right yeah. there. <laughs> the IRS free file. Oh no. Not the return on Divine Sleep Taxes. No, but Rim, oh. a great counter hit. We spend it all. This character is dead. No, not dead yet. Wants to be able to keep it. Orb going to lock him down, though. Tie it up. Saving 200 meter for both these players in this final round. Uh oh, you're stuck under the vacuum. No, oh. the neutral jump <laughs> to avoid any interaction. Orb comes in clutch to get the whiff punish. Catches him with the 60 as well. Um, it begins. Guess for game. Yeah. Command grab kills. I thought he was going to do it again. Okay. Do it, do it in response. Oh. <laughs> that was, that was, I feel like, the quickest C orb activation I've seen. Like, it felt like it yeah, came instantly. I mean, yeah, I mean, VO. VO into a FF and it orb is your support here. Support in uni every week here at Tampa never sleeps.
Now these players are gonna, you know, support us in giving some great gameplay right here. Snowballness coming in here versus Luca. Wow. Goes for the delay throw after. That is negative four on block, uh, if I'm not mistaken, because it is a close ender 5AB. Yep, uh, it ends right at negative four, but it's spaced out of most throws, so it was Luca knowing that they had to just be ready and be a little patient for whatever Thomas wanted to do afterwards, and then you had to be patient right there finding another great opening. It begins. Tries to go for the tricky stuff. Yeah. Oh, wow. I like the CS there off of the 2-2-A whiff to keep yourself safe from any whip potential whip punish. Oh, oh wow, the great throw. It should be enough to kill. Get the 5B punish. Thank you, Belgarath, for the $5 donation. BDP not helping you out, Balmus. And that will be enough with the 100 meter. And we get the 25 cent refund. Thank you very much for putting your soda can back in the recycling bin. It's only 10 cents. It's only 10 cents. You get more of that. You get a whole match Reno code for claiming, uh, for, you know, cashing out that refund right there. It's true. <laughs> the Vorpal refund is just a match Reno code. Oh, missed the 5B link right there, but we do find the two, quick 2A check after the situation right there. Balmus just wanting to lock down because he kind of realized, like, hey, if I just let Luka do what Uzuki wants to do, it's going to be a problem for me. All right, locked down in the corner. What's the response to get out? Does dash block nothing? Balmus does get a throw. One more throw away from killing. Oh, TK drilled the green shield, so it's going to stay safe on here and get a back to corner routing right here. Should be able to side swap. I don't know. I don't I don't really know a lot of her side swap routing. I know when you land with the coffin, there's a potential that you can get it side swap based on your air stuff. Goes for the potion on block. Oh, but dash 3B, we found fire. The hide players, 3B, it's like cavemen discovering fire. I don't hate the, the dash potion, right? Because they've just been seeing, like, Luka has been seeing once Balmus is, like, forced to block and deal with the Yuzuki pressure, they're not really challenging a whole lot, right? Like, we saw that dash 3B come up after, like, a big minus situation. So being able to steal some of those turns with throwing, like, potion or, you know, even maybe trying to steal coffin stances and, like, could be the recipe for success that they need. Like the spacing right there to get the coffin follow-up. Is still going to get the verbal cycle, but 3C... One of the best anti-airs and anti-air OS's in the game. It's gonna be a lot of damage right here. Just shy of 4k right here. CVO to keep yourself safe after the Toads of Geki. Text the throw right there. Ooh, big coffin. There's actually so much damage if we can finish this combo. No! Oh, no! Bounce bounces! Plus frame. Potion. The grid steal might matter! Vorpal Cycle coming to a close! Oh my god! The wake of 6B counter hit! You won the cycle, but you lost your life. Oh my goodness. I like the plays there, though. I like the potential plays there. That Vorpal Cycle was really gonna matter in that situation. And then Balmus played for the risky wake up 6B. Kimone, we will nerf this normal in the Ogre patch. <laughs> We'll have to see. Oh, color change on win? Can you do that? Is that legal? Can I make a new rule? Yeah. I don't know. Can I? Regardless of if you can do it or not, that's just toxic behavior. Can I, can I instate a new rule like how Bryce is trying to? Okay. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back. What? <laughs> we're back. A don't worry about it. A little bit of mind game. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, I have what? The, the Balmus Gambit. I've never been so audibly and visually confused at a series of events I just witnessed. Just three color changes into a disconnect. Rejoin immediate ready up. We're good to go. We're good to go. <laughs> it's like a magic trick. It's like Twisted Fate cards. Like rolling the dice on what card color and then exiting the lobby once the R beats you in mid lane. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> Nice, gets a throw. Secures that purple cycle. Tosses the potion out, gonna be able to apply the poison state. And now just playing very patient, because they seem like, hey, if I just sit full screen, like, Balmas has to come to me. They have to try to figure out, like, what I'm gonna do, how, to, how I'm gonna bring the counter play. And good old Air Orbiter is gonna be our friend right here. Great tech right there. 
Yeah, I mean, you had to expect that, right? Because you see the shield off of the CS there. You know you want to go for it, but TK Pogo is going to bait out the stand tech there, and that's a whole lot of damage. Okay, I have smarts here. And they're keeping it safe. Oh, good VO right there. Going to blow up the 60. <laughs> you need brain rot, though. Both players want to be in VO. Yo, nice back step out of the coffin that does have invulnerability to avoid the 3C. Please neutral CS to get meter. Thank you. Builds almost a full grip on there and tries right. to VO, but it doesn't matter. Balm is keeping it safe. I do want to say, though, I really like uh, Uzuki's VO animation. Oh, it's great. I think it's cool. Uh, I don't think this is cool. Mother help. It's cool if you're Balmus, right? Found a good route, found the corner, found the damage that you need. Now you gotta, you gotta play some good old fashioned straight throw. I like these shields trying to steal it, but Balmus is ready for it. Grid breaks you, gonna get the cycle, gotta get the damage. <laughs> ooh, ooh, grid breaks you. <laughs> That's how I felt that. Alright, the memes, they continue, but we don't have meter to get out. Dash 2A is gonna find a counter hit. Tries to tech each other. What a throw whiff animation. Woohoo! 60, hello! A very aggressive, but Luca needed to take an aggressive stance right here to try to give themselves a big comeback that they need right here. Wake up, Rekka! Not gonna work out as Luca just slowly walks under them. Yeah, the 2C there is gonna be a great hitbox. We are gonna get the knockdown here. All right, grid steal time. Uh, grid stealing is happening, but Luca is running out very shortly right here. It's gonna go back into Balmus' favor. Yeah, a lot of bad shields on the side of Luca, but runs up, gets the 2A. The question is, is this enough to kill? We are going to get enough for Iwex. Uh-oh. The goop. Hey, you're dead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You're dead. That feels bad. You tried to go yeah. for the Splatoon mix and then to wake up CS into uh, the wall. Ooh, did they? I, I gotta wanna... go check that bracket again. I, I wanna My memory is crazy. Yeah, it was it was, it was it was a while ago, so memory's not super firm. But I know these two do play each other. Um, I don't know how, like how much like tournament experience they have versus each other, but definitely ran the set at least a handful of times. So let's see what previous knowledge they can use to bring in. Both players just actually opting a dash block early up. We saw Riv in the last games want to go for a lot of up back orb, but instead we're just gonna get close and try to start breaking those ankles. Yeah. If there's one thing I know that Catalyst is particularly weak against, um, it's side switches. Um, it was it was particularly apparent in the Ryojin set when Ryojin would just do full jump forward into Pogo. And if they ever crossed up, a lot of the time Catalyst was getting Assault forward, which is not really what you want to do against Pogo. Um, and I mean, I just saw them get Assault forward again off of a side switch that Riv did. So that could be a thing that uh, Riv could take advantage of. And it's definitely something that you don't want coming out on defense, just a raw assault like that. Always very scary. Oh, just C dives to get away from it. Not wanting to deal with it at all. Oh, okay, now let's try to be aggressive with that CG oh. right there. What is going on? That was insane. The assault there to get the cross up, drop the combo again. Kato is still with the lease on life, plus frames. Oh, doesn't cancel it at all. Uh -oh. oh, you tried to throw off the instant J6C. It's gonna be big for Kato's. Should be able to. Is, is this enough? Is this actually enough? Does this kill with? Seth has the lowest health in the game. Is this actually enough? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, it was. Oh, yeah. They got it. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> Like, I thought it was going to be way more health than that, even though I knew, like I thought it wasn't going to kill. But that was that put you at 3 HP right there. The VO's the out. Uh-oh, it begins. Yep. Good shields right there. TKJ2C not wanting to deal with everything. But we've seen Grim go for a lot of throws in those situations where they're able to find those big orbs. Or for that fancy mix. So it does catch the air to air. It does beat the... Uh, the ground throw attempts right there, and Catalyst gonna, you know, just beat them in the corner, taking that first round. Yeah, really great stuff there. Nice confirm off of the 6 c as well in that scenario. Catalyst mm -hmm. looking real strong right now, and the J2C going crazy. I mean, that is a good way to avoid the command grab, and it guarantees him a punish, right? 
It's one yep. of the nicest things to have against a command grab like that is a dive kick like that. <laughs> it does also like put them above a lot of, uh, I think some of the uh, sets air options that they're looking for in that situation. It's also put them above if they just try to listen or something. So definitely covers quite a few different options right there. Oh, tries to mash out. Great meaty from Catalyst. And you don't really want to guess a whole lot wrong. We're getting freaky. Yeah, get a little too freaky right there. Riv gonna be locking him down, but we find that CDP. We see that red flash, and we're gonna connect Catalyst sitting now at match point. To be fair, I don't think he saw much of anything. It was just black, and I just think he just committed to the to, to the two two C. But I mean, works out in his favor. He said, I understand it now, and hit the two two C right there. Yeah, I mean that's what I would do. Uh -oh. Okay, pop Celestia. Oh, that's trade. trade? What a trade. Shout outs to Reversals losing their invuln in the middle of the move. Love to see it. Shout out to Bianca at 2360. What a great shield right there. Kato's not able to cancel. The riv. <laughs> Getting a, a, a Melty Blood Drift mix right there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the one of the oldest Seth mixes in the book. It's, it's all oh. right, you see. You see these sets players try to go for these, like, 92-layer Zoomer mix-ups, and Riv just bringing stuff out right of, like, 2015, saying, hey, this still works. You're still going to get hit by it. Oh, my God. Speaking of baiting the guard thrust, this should be enough to kill 5AB into the IREX. We get to see it yet again, but this time with a breakdown. Okay. After, after that I last one, I'm, I'm never sure. After the last one, I'm never sure. Right? No, I, right? I, that's, all, that's on you. That's on you, bud. As far as I know, I'm winning. Uh, wrong, wrong side. I'm winning the grid cycle right now. <laughs> well, we can see who will win the grid cycle here because we've got Havard and Balmas locked back in. Both these players trying to move on forward to our loser semis. Potential Aka Mirror in the making here. 2FF, the projectile of all time. Run up, Rekka, the OS crush of all time. Thank you very much, Isaac. See, ooh, great 5A from Havard. Ooh, I don't think you wanted that sand shield right there, but we're still in control. The shield, the run out grab with the drop on the combo. Woohoo! We're interacting right now. We're interacting right now. Buddy, there are options and we are selecting them right now. Both these players just wanting to swing constantly at each other because they know that, hey, if you're not ready for this, I'm going to be able to get a lot. Havard actually pulling out a J6C right there, right at the deep angle. Going to pop that CS, try to keep it up a little close, knowing that they'll probably get the cycle anyways after this grid. Uh oh. Oh, no! No, as a Gord player, I feel that when your backdash gets caught by the 660. Ball missing at round number one. You can say it's an undernight place that happens to everyone across the board. Yeah, but there's some of the worst backdashes actually have an easier time with 616 because they're still in their invuln frame. Uh, that's, I hate this. Listen, this is true. Backdashes yes. against Hyde, true, isn't that something? Uh -oh. Ooh, great dash throw right there. I've already able to lock him down, but we saw once this happened that Balmus was ready to just like press and go for these DPs where they can. Once again, ADP gonna connect after the CS. Isn't that once big again, backdashing against Tide. What happens? You get caught by the ADP into the EX Pogo. Plus frames. Checking out. Woohoo! Yeah, also oh, the fadeaway J6C. Great delay right there. Not going to be able to get clipped by that EX Orbiter. Be able to lock Balmus down a little bit longer, but needs to find a big opening. ADP. Goes for the Pogo pack walk into the Vitatsu to get the whip punish. Havard getting away with that round. No, I, I, re I really like that because, like, you've been seeing Balmus go for, like, a lot of those close range aggressive options and just, like, yeah, I'm going to walk back. If you DPL block and they'll punish you, and then seeing like, hey, oh, well, Orbiter's gonna try to, you know, have the world be your oyster, but Hard wanted to lock him down, and they just need to find that opportunity again, because Balmus is making the world theirs. Yeah, great stuff there. Great hit confirmed. Oh my god! Actually avoided the 6 6 C. Great stuff from Havard, gonna push to the corner with EX Tatsu. No, the combo drops! I can't believe it! That doesn't end here. 
Ooh, tries to bait out something hard there. Havara does need to make some plays like that. Gets the backdash with the J6C. There's a huge open up right now. Gonna secure the life lead. Throw kills. Yep. But we'll just DP on your wake up knowing that you wanted to be aggressive, right? Like, Balmus in every matchup that we've seen has been loving to just go for those, you know, like, high players across the board love to do like wake up TK Orb, right? Or like wake up Rekka uh, to try to catch you off guard. But if you're just able to lock him down and you have the health to go and the confidence, you can end up like Havard and be 1-0 in the set. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the best wake up options um, for Akka is ADP into EX Fireball um, because it is very fast and it's also... Uh, you know, an anti-air in its own right. I was gonna say protective against throws, but it actually doesn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. and we're Once out. again, aggressive DPs have been working for Havard across the board this set. See, Balmus can make a big adaptation, finds a good fireball CS right there. Havard can be able to steal the corner with it. I like that route. Got it to the corner, got the hard knockdown. Great tech from Balmus. Backdash yet again caught by the 6 6 Pick up. We have oh. those. Oh no, we don't. Yeah, but we got go those. Hard round. Yeah, we do got those. We got 30 frame overhead. ADP. Ooh. Tries to go for some Yori mix right there. Yeah, but it's not gonna work out here. That was earlier in the day. You can make that work, but right? here in Undernight, you gotta hold this. No way. Just the raw orbiter is gonna connect, and somehow Bombus made a comeback. The hide keto install. 3C gonna connect as well. It's like the Kai Kisuke install. Yeah. Like they're both sword characters. They got good fireballs. What else do you want? For real. One of them can do. This is like EX fireball over and over again on block now. What's that move called? Oh, I don't know. Uh, just, yeah, true. I don't know either. That's why I asked. Oh, backdash. So much warple though. So much meter. Uh-oh. It begins. Potential guess for game. I don't think throw kills here unless you build enough. Never mind. Okay, it would've. Yeah, if you would've kept that throw right there. Backdash working on 660 this time. VO's out of the DP attempt right there. Able to lock it down. Full guard thrust. See fireball. Keep your turn. <laughs> Oh, the backdash working again with the dash 5A. The interactions were interacting. We're going to game number three. Sorry, did you see how many games Balmas had compared to Havard? Uh, it was like, it was like 5K 6, 000, versus like, oh yeah. It was like 6,000 to 500. Yeah, I mean, true. Crazy. I mean, how many games well, has Havard played offline? Well, is that, are those ranked games? Like, do those count? I think, those are just, I think those are just room match games. Room match, huh? Like, like, you know, these lobbies. Ah. Yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what any of those counters represent. I just look and I just go, uh. Well, I know what that counter represents. That counter represented the counter hit right there, because Bulba the first interaction. Go to their favor, oh. we'll find another 6 6 c to connect in the corner. There's no counter hit, but it's counter hitting my brain. Uh -oh. oh, that one hurts. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. We've all been there. Enough to kill. <laughs> Tries to build the IWAX. Doesn't get it, but the grid break. Balmus with a super fast round and one round away from making the Aka mirror not happen. Hey, that's projectile invul. Yep, and they gets the extension off of it as well from this patch. Gonna make the work happen. Try to use these double jumps to bait out these anti airs, but Balmus is ready to anti air and air to air right here. Leading them back to the mid screen. Uh -oh. uh, Yell his, his best starter. His, his best starter. So much damage. 4.5. 4.3 instead. Yeah, I wanted to save more meter knowing that they need at least one more interaction to close out even with an IW, but Raw 6 c gonna come out for Havard right here. Yo, the spacing on that. We're gonna, yeah, EX Tatsu push all the way to the corner. One more interaction. Throw does not kill there. The, the BDP. Anyone's game right now. 
the raw shield right there after the 660 whiff. So you have to keep yourself safe so they don't get run up anti-air, but you almost fell into that projectile. But you'll just fall into the skyscraper anti-air anyways. Balm is taking it 2-1. Uh, like East Tokyo. <laughs> so he said he's East Coast. East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, players get into it. Two old school players playing on an old school stage selecting park here. All right, first to three right now. So you're going to see a lot of the walled Yuzu matchup in the games to come. Let's see who and can strike first. If you saw anything from uh, Tannison's previous set where they played versus Deer Skin, it's their willingness to be painted, right? So while Yuzu will like be able to zone out and deal with a lot, Tansen wants to wait for situations like this where they can find big opportunities to close it out. And if not, they'll just hold down back and they'll block it for some time to try to press the Can we put meter on it? Yes, we are. Oh, it actually dropped. Oh, oh the 2FF. It's deathly on whiff now, but it costs grid though, and that costs meter. Uh, hello, Miss Influence. Glad to see you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if that was like supposed to be like a turbo hard read on like a quick like stance teleport. And you're like, I'm gonna get you so good, and then. But Lena Hazard gonna gonna take advantage of that situation and just kill. Okay, I was gonna say it is walled health, but okay. I need Tana to type in chat what that input was, because I don't I don't know. Was it like was it like 360 like assault? Like I don't even know. It had to it had to been a weird like 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 a weird buffer. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Y'all, all the buttons coming up Tanison right now. Are we gonna potentially go for no, this route's too long, I was gonna say God press. Do it again. Down, it's good swipes. Oh. Yeah. That is one of the, the bad parts about that against a character like Yuzu is that when you jump back, you can get that confirmed and get that great shield on the assault. God press goes for a reset. Yeah, but Lena was ready for here, trying to lock him down and instead find a big throw right here. Oh, the counter hit throw. Who's the grappler now, huh? Uh, it's gotta be this wake up 360C with the wake up CS. Ooh. No, it was wake up swipes right there. 171 AD trying to keep him safe. <gasps> Another whip throw, but no punish. I don't know, they try to catch something out. That is gonna catch something out. Tannison alive once more and a massive meter lead, which means you can put some plus frames. Oh, like here. For, for an aggressive parry, but we'll instead get an aggressive shield right there. Tannison getting a grid break and a charge to make sure they can lock this cycle down. Oh, wow, great pressure right there. Half health already for Lina. Tries to go for some footsies, but 2C is my footsie tool. Now takes the, the teleport right there. Body splash still gonna connect. Oh my goodness. Oh no! Goes for the Vorpal Cycle. I think they could have just went for a full combo into Infinite Worth and it would have killed. I think it would have been tight of that spacing, right? And that, you know, you just go for the thing you're confident with that'll keep yourself safe and lead you to a very, very safe situation. Because you know that, like, hey, I've got all the time in the world. I've got the health to spare. Even if I get hit, it's not too bad. Uh -oh. I mean, yeah, Wald does have the most health in the game. So you can definitely afford to do a couple more interactions than you would with other characters. Um, not that kind of interaction, though. Yeah. Yeah, not that one. Oh, wait, maybe oh. this one, though. Yup. Yep. He knows you can't do that against someone who knows. But hey, you have to check. You have to say, hey, do you know? You have to make sure that they know, and Tannison, Tannison's a knower. Lena, Lena saw the hold down back after the second flip and was like, oh, I see. I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They understand it now. Let's see. We understand. If... We see into the future. We're, we're seeing. We're, 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 we're hashtag knowers. All right, now Hashtag we're seeing a little... Uma Musume enjoyers. Yes, yes. Read Cinderella Gray? That's the Uma Musume thing that people say to read? I don't know. I don't watch it. I don't either. All I know is Rice Shower, Manhattan, and then Gold Chip. Yeah, yep. I, don't know. I know that the Hornets is lost here. There's Lena getting another set of extensions. Try to lock him down, but Tannison finds a great creeping edge into the immediate 360. 
<laughs> the down back shield and then seeing the CS and then getting a delayed 360A is a very funny set of interactions. Good flip out, trying to toss him once again, but Lena ready for it. Yeah, that showed right there um, that a standing wall can actually allow specific characters to actually get standing combos on him that you otherwise wouldn't get on other combos because he is such a large hitbox. Something you gotta be ready for. Lena was ready for this conversion as well to take another round, but we've seen Tannison make this comeback before. So let's see if they can do it. Ooh. The 6 almost caught the up back. Hey, we still can cancel that on block though. Yep. I have to say, Lena's throws have been like very, very like insane this game. Like I feel like every single time they're throwing out, it's working perfectly, leading them into great situations. I was like, I was like, what are you about to say? And then could break throw, and I was like, what is Tavi about to say? <laughs> I was like, you better not say that they're bad. No, no, I was, I was gonna be positive, but they wanted to make me even more positive. For the walk right, back. I mean this game's coming up on Lena right now. All it takes is one hit. The 3D in response, not gonna get anything though. It's just enough to kill. Yes, it is. Yeah, thanks to the uh, the good old teleport 2FF right there to close it out. Lena wants to tie it up, but it's three out of five. That's why Lena wanted to lose the first game and Tannis wanted to lose the second. They wanted to get that download. They wanted to understand what their opponents wanted to do. And now let's see who can take it forward. One to one. We still need two more winner or two more game wins from either player. Maybe the potential game five, maybe the potential final game, final round. We will have to see right here. Immediate aggression coming from Lena this time though, instead of wanting to back off. Tannison closes the distance. Uh -oh. Brother, brother. How, <laughs> the mashes from Lena have been so on point this bracket. Almost every wake up mash has resulted in a counter hit. She's a Marvel player. She knows exactly when she needs to mash and how to mash most efficiently, right? Like, like Marvel Rivals, right? Like, <laughs> I, like Iron Fist? <laughs> like Jeff the Shark? Like Jeff the Shark. No, she's fighting Jeff the Shark right now. Yeah. I'm great. He's great. Thing. I don't, I don't know. That. I don't know. Uh, like Wolverine? Like Squirrel? <laughs> Great throw once again from Lena Hazard right there. Should be able to cash up for a lot of damage if they want, but they know they just want to put themselves into one more strike for a situation. The patience. Yeah, they've got the, the life lead right here. No cancel off the 2FF right there, but Tannison knows exactly when they can press as well to close that round out. I love Tannison's patience there to not fight for the Vorpal Cycle and just fight for the point where Lena will kill themselves and overextend. And they found a great hit here in this round. You see connecting right there. Good tech out of there. No push-ups for Tannison right now. A Celestial though? Oh, just a little bit out of it. But the FF is going to counter hit. Gracie. Boing. Guess for game. Just the raw shield expecting something crazy from Lena right there, but with the willingness to hold down and body splash coming out for Tannison, taking that one with a near perfect. The willingness from the top rope for the body splash to go over the low normal. Great crush there from Tannison and one game away from winner's side of grand finals. Now we just gotta see, you know, can Lena make that adaptation that she needs to to not allow Tannison to close those distances, right? Because I feel like Lena starts these rounds very, very favorably, right? Kind of like as Yusu should in this matchup. But Tannison just makes a couple of right reads right in a row, and then it's no Uh oh. Yeah, I mean, that is the, the walled way, right? Like, you kind of put them in the corner when you can, or at least keep them as close to you for your Oki when you can, so you can threaten that three frame command grab. What a pickup! Yeah, finding a great jab check right there. Side swap as well, and another fantastic route, but Tech's out of the 360D. I don't think Tannison was ready for that. The patience, though, not willing to mash on a potential frame trap, but A, not a potential tech either. He walks him down, guarantees to try to charge the cycle, but Tannison wants to cash it out. What a trade. He trades. 
Psycho goes back to Janison as well. Yeah, I love that he didn't shield there in response because he knew that blocking there was going to get him the grid that he needed to secure that. Really great stuff. Tannison's grid presence is so good. And so was that 236A. Forgot to spend 100 to kill here. But that's perfectly fine because that's potential set point for Tannison. Excellent, excellent stuff. Scaled very hard at the end, but Tannison knew exactly what he needed to do. Let's see if he can get it once more. But Lena Hazard should make it. Yeah. Oh, doesn't check that throw. The Vorpal Cycle is going to go to Lena. Get the throw extension because of the throw combo. A good tech this time. Lena Hazard not going to be able to find those throws to work out as much the further as the set goes on. Hits him with the fade away. And Tannison going to lock him down once more. Gonna get the, the hit follow up into the 3C. That's going to kill time for the Vorpal Cycle. You love to see the routing. Plus frames off of the whip belly flop. Oh, with the counter hit off of the 236. That is a great start for Tannison and a potential one hit game. And goes for the, uh, not the VO strip, but the VO removal right there. Plus. So the teleport right there, not gonna get opened up today. Good text as well. Okay. Not out of it just yet. Ne never, oh. I was gonna say never mind, but. That played out very differently, but Tannison taking it 3-1, moving into winner's side of Grand. All miss going from one Akka into the other, potentially hey. to fight the Yuzu. You gotta run the gauntlet sometimes and see that they can do it, changing the color up as well. Kind of feeling himself a little bit more, but Catalyst is staying very patient right now, trying to find these big opportunities to be wild, to, be, to add up that big damage wherever you can. Oh, caught the backdash. Both characters have tied frame data wise for the best backdash in the game, along with Ford up there. One of the fastest backdashes in the game, one of the fastest to recover. But will it matter? This is a massive hit. Holy damage. And that's what you need. Like, a big thing with Kalos is their routing, when they're able to secure these hits, is always going to be very, very much. That's what you need to do with your fight. You need to not give them as few interactions as possible to make those big moves to control the state of this game. Oh, that was almost really bad right there. Yeah, parry. Oh, actually ends up counter hitting. Nice run up delay to catch the wake up parry. Great stuff from Balmest to fight his way back into this round. For Pogo right there, Tex out of the Catalyst, maybe trying to make something happen, but Balma's teching out once again. Nice patience to not press anything there. The J6C from Catalyst. Still one up parry though. We are gonna have to put meter on this if we wanna kill. Uh, no, we don't. We just wanna go for a charge fireball, but Balma's went for forward tech, dash no block. He got punished for it. For real. Dash, no Minecraft block. Yeah. Ooh, Atatsu. Atatsu. Smash ultimate. There's no Steve. There's only Akatsuki here locking you down. Yeah, but is he is he digging for diamonds? He's digging for a victory right now. Finding a big opening right there. Punishing that parry attempt right now. Cable has been very parry happy tonight. I mean, that's the defense, baby. Um, man, a lot of infinite worth misinputs tonight, huh? Is that the theme for this TNS? Maybe the worth is more a little more finite than we think. God, this did so much damage. Just under 5k plus 621 from the oh. Celestial. Oh my, oh my, oh my god. Uh oh. Can't okay, hail bring her, you don't have meter. All it is is a guess for game. Guess on the next hit confirmed. The shield there puts you under 100 meter, and that might matter, but it isn't going to matter as we get a grid break and a pogo is going to connect. Will this be enough to kill? Oh, most definitely oh, yeah. right here. You have all the world on your favor. CS is a weld, so we'll only spend a little bit of meter here to guarantee the closeout. Balm is stealing that one. This plus 808. Awesome. That did plus 808 with a 10% damage from Grid Break. Jimmy Christmas. Ooh, nice throw. Get a, get a full confirm here. And the Vorpal Cycle, which is really big. Both players on 200 meter. Potential EX parry could come out, but EX Tatsu, or EX Tatsu, B Tatsu, more like. Push the corner. Oh, yeah. 
it felt the X, right? It felt like the exact thing that they needed to do to get out of that situation. Get some microcharges as well, but we're just gonna pogo to try to mix you up, parry you this time, as you try to make something happen. Nice throw. One more kills. You bait anything out? Bait it out of stand tag, but the 6B is gonna connect in the ensuing scenario. Cadal is taking the first game, and they're tied practically on room matches. Both these players are grinders. They're putting in the reps, putting in the work, trying to make it happen. Cadal is immediately running it. It's a lot of games. That is a lot of games. A lot of games. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time playing uni. Yeah. If Twitch had if Twitch chat had image embeds, we need everyone to screenshot their time on under night two right now. Po post time. Yeah, po po post hours. Post hours. <laughs> two players not on vacation. They're grinding it out, but relaxing here and trying to make it happen. Big fireball and a big grid break for Kayla since they weren't able to make that big connection hit. Oh, give me that. Delicious. Yeah. No meter to guard thrusted, so you do just have to hold that. Catalyst with a massive lead right now, and still some more plus range. Doesn't commit to the cancel. Knew that Bombus wasn't gonna press, but did know Bombus was gonna press there. And a perfect and the set point. Yep. Yeah, as a reminder, this is loser semi, so we're back to two out of three for this last game right here. You don't have that time to make those adaptations, you don't have time to make those reads. You gotta put it all on the line here. Okay, great shield. Saw that there was no cancels, so went for the 6B punish. It's gonna get the Vorpal Cycle ball miss not done just yet. Nice block. Tried to Abare with the Tatsu right there, but it's not gonna work out, so ball miss locks him down once more. By cash out into, yeah, put him into just as like a throw situation. Just yeah. like that. Yep. Throw situation, the grid break, and Balmus coming back with a very fast round in and of itself in response. Okay. That, uh, that J6C that has been working great. Whenever Catalyst is able to actually get into the situation where J6C can connect and make it work, they are always finding these big presses. But Balmus is finding these great force functions to work out to them right here. Gonna be locked them down. I love that hit confirm right there. Got as much as they could out of it. 4.6K, but the jump back J6C is gonna counter hit. More defensive options for me, waiter. <laughs> oh. The ball is, you know, wants to wants to say, hey, we're actually 86 on defensive options right here. We're only having the aggression come forward right here. Good blocks of the charge force function and the slight delay right there caught ball is lacking a little bit. Well, okay, let's get the side spot. Oh, no. The throw out of the corner. What do we do now? How are you going to keep up the pressure? Uh, we're back to neutral. See pizza is what they'll be looking for right here. Trying to catch him lacking, but the dash 2A should be enough. For Catalyst to take this one 2 0. Oh. What a crazy back and forth. And X versus Y, A, B, C, D, E, F is going to happen, right? And then when the Akatsuki player throws out Q at like layer one, you're like, uh oh, I don't know how to deal with that. Not the Q. Not I don't know the Q. if they can go. I don't know if Aka players can go that far in the alphabet. I've seen them. They can definitely do it. They'll have to see if our players can, you know, hit all 26 letters or we'll end pretty early right here. Uh, 118 p.m. A story time combo video. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Like how he named it that. And the great break off of the J6C. A great start from Catalyst right now. Huge damage. 4.3. Next hit kills. Trying to shimmy ya, shimmy yay for the 6C. Uh, one big thing with Kalos as well that we haven't really mentioned is they are a very momentum-driven player, right? So coming off of a big team 2 over to Balmus is going to, like, allow them to steal some rounds earlier on that Lena might not be fully prepared for, right? But now that we had that momentum come through, they are able to get it. Lena's like, okay, I, I figured out what you want to do. I'm going to try to blow you up every time you try to parry me. Yeah, the parries are going to be crucial to either bait them out or to get out of your situation, but maybe we change up our defensive options. Nope. Well, right now we're not changing them up so far, and Lena is going to make it work. They lost the first round, but this one is looking like a perfect right here. Guess for game. 
Throw is scary here. Lena's shown it before. Oh, just blocks the 2-2-C. And we are now, again, tied up on rounds and almost a perfect in response from Lena. But we chip them out. That's the important part. We take those victories where we can versus you, Uriha. Get sniped out of the sky, but not going to make it happen. This will just snipe you on the ground. Yeah, that 5B, great point to counter hit. Corporal Cycle is going to go to Catalyst here. Gets the bait. Okay, gets the counter hit throw. 6B, CS. Yeah, uh -oh. Big 6-6C six, six, right here. Spends the meter. This is going to secure the Vorpal Cycle. That's very important distinction to make. Pop it early. And a quick B Tatsu check right there. Lena was not ready for it. And Catalyst taking game number one. Yeah, great delayed Tatsu there to bait out the potential mash. And Catalyst really fired on all cylinders in that game. And I mean, how? let's see how far that momentum can carry them before Lena does make an adaptation that maybe throws Catalyst off of his game. We'll, we'll have to see. Catalyst, like, you know, this is back to Losers Finals, right? So we're back in three out of five territory for the rest of the night. Uh, you have those times to, to figure things out. And we saw that work, like uh, starting to work for Lena in the previous set that they had played. Candice is still able to clutch it out in the very end, but we can, a lot of time for adaptation is good for players. Yeah, for sure. This is a first of three, so Catalyst still has to win. Two more, no 3D for you, and now you are locked out of it because you are grid broken. Yeah, and you're going to uh -oh. get tossed once more, and you're going to put in that very scary situation. But I think Lena kind of using that end of that round to be like, okay, that's information. You're very aggressive on going to throw. Like, they happen a lot in this set. And now you can have that understanding and try to actually punish them for, uh, for going for that. Yeah, it seems like Lena is trying to operate on Catalyst's pace, which is a hard thing to do, especially if you're not used to how quick someone wants to play. Oh, that almost exploded. Okay, that one exploded. Raw B Tatsu again has been working so good for Kayla. Just Lena is not ready for it. He's getting close by it. Oh my god, the counter hit throw! Such a quick game two for Catalyst. One thing I do want to point out is how consistent Catalyst is at getting the micro dash 2B after the B Tatsu mid screen to get that confirm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's very important, right? If you're someone who wants to go for those, like, uh, those very aggressive two uh, uh, B-Tatsus to try to catch your opponent out, you have to have the willingness to commit back to it or else I'm just going to take every B-Tatsu you give to me because I'm not worried about it until you have a, a 100 meter or more on deck. Uh, Lena looking at the Jushichi VOD for the Aka, the Aka Yuzu matchup just for a quick sec. Yeah. Just getting Sometimes that knowledge you down. You just, sometimes you also gotta you gotta take your 60 seconds where you can and ice your opponent out. That's also Is true. It, you gotta slow the momentum. You gotta come back down to your pace. You gotta find your zen moment. It's something that I've 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 told players and like I I remember there's there's one player in particular who I beat that into their head for a year and they went from like barely making it out of pools to like very consistently crushing like a ton of players. So it's definitely like being able to reset games that you've lost back into your speed is very important. I think Lena taking a little bit of that time right now, we're seeing it work for her favor. Oh, the drop combo though might not work out, but the 2A is going to counter hit another great Rurik mash, and that is a great start. The momentum has shifted. Flip back to the corner to get the teleport right here, but we'll just keep that pressure going once more. And Lena now securing a perfect. Yippee! Yippee! Oh my god. Alright, Tatsu's blocked this time using the C Fireball though. Keep himself safe afterwards. I mean, just yeah, able super, to hold down back. Super delayed follow up on the EX Fireball right there. Very interesting. The throw, not at Oh, it is enough to secure the Vorpal Cycle, but is it, is it worth it getting hit in this scenario? Tatsu gets the charge right here. Hit Catalyst. Not popping it just yet, but it's running out of time. Oh, but they shield right at the very end to secure it once again. Oh my god, the double spot dodge from Lena. So good to avoid both the Tatsu and the 60. Great stuff right there. Put some meter on that. 3600. Stay where you can. Good tech for Catalyst. She uh -oh, builds it out, but we still get a toss around. Uh, once more, do it again. Throw again. Oh no. Doesn't even need it. Gets the staggered 2A. Should be enough to kill with 100 meter, but we drop our combo. Commentator's curse. I cannot escape it. 
How could you do this, Cookie? How could you ruin Catalyst's chances right here? Lena finding um, an opportunity to get out and should be able to close this round as long as they keep it tight, because I'm not going to curse them. IW connects. Lena I was going to say, that was a commentator's too. blessing right there. He said it exactly as it happened. Ruined his opportunity. Finally ends up losing a game this set. And will that affect his momentum going into game number four? Sorry, it's the Portland power up. I can't control it. That is, we're pat we're patenting that. The Portland power up TM. Yeah, put it on a shirt. Put it on a shirt. <laughs> that should definitely be something. I mean, they did it with the it cost grid though. Shit. You can do you can do it for Portland power up. That's ankle gator. It costs grid though. It, co it does cost great, though. I, I mean, I'm still going to say it on the mic, but we can put those shirts in a fire. I think it's fine. No, it's great. I still have mine. <laughs> you got one? Yeah, <laughs> the Angle, Angle's my local. He's up in Seattle. Of course I got oh, one. It, that is right. He is PNW because he played in the, um, what is, is, is it Hop Anderson. On Uni or is it Hop On PNW? Is what you hop, guys hop, on PN, hop On PNW is the, like, that's their like org or whatever, but it's knowledge check is the exhibitions that they run. Uh, yeah, I've always seen hop on PNW and I just went, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. I'm gonna hop, hop on, on over. the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, you come fight people like Lena Hazard who can make it very deep into these TNS tournaments. I can also experience Pacific Drive, the hit survival video game. I just call that Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, true. Woo nice blocks on the 6B, the CS to, to keep getting the follow up. The teleport out to avoid the J6C, but another Vorpal Cycle is going to go to Catalyst. Oh no. And I think a couple more Vorpal Cycles might be going to them after that right here. Catching them out with the green shield, but Lena staying very confident to just try to zone out where they can. Yeah, gets another Vorpal Cycle. All the Vorpal Cycles so far have gone to Catalyst. Tries to bait. I think they wanted the 6C there, but ends up getting a dash 5A. It costs grid, though. It does cost grid, though, and also is going to cost Kalos a grip of life to try to be opening up Lena. I think a big thing is that, like, Kalos has been trying to cycle between the, like, strike throw and then also catching him with those uh, tip range 6 speed connections, but Lena has blocked every single 6 speed that has come out of the set. I want to see uh, Catalyst go for the assault to bait the protect. Not going to matter though. Lena gets a hit, doesn't secure the kill. EX parry to get out of the corner. Uh oh. It may have got you back. It may have got you out of the corner, but it doesn't get you out of that round. Doesn't get you out of that situation. Lena taking it and keeping the momentum to go into her favor right here. Oh, finally finds a J6C, and you don't want to let Catalyst get one of those. Okay, knocked out in the corner. Vorpal Cycle is going to be scary. The VO is not going to secure you the Vorpal Cycle, though. Yeah, teleport out of the void, the 2-2-C. Catalyst was not ready, but are we going to get the infinite worth here? 5-A-B, infinite worth. Yeah, just cash out a meter where you can. You still have a ton of time left on the round. A ton of meters to be gained in this. So, add up the damage where you can. Puts you in some potentially good situations, but you just threw yourself into the corner, and you got grid broken by a J6-C-I-C right here. This is... Huge and another 2C to come down. Doesn't even need to spend the meter on it. Ends up getting the freaky mix up with the J2C and Catalyst all of a sudden on set point. Yeah, after a couple rounds of like not being able to find those big openings, that's very huge for them. But you can see Valina can control the momentum here. These are the 5AB to get the knockdown and also to build that little extra meter. Gets the clip with the 2B. Oh no, but autocorrect. I told you earlier in the bracket, I've seen autocorrect do awful things in this game. And that's that's one of those right there. A very unfortunate situation. Like I don't even fully understand why that happened, but we have to deal with those consequences. And Lena now in a very, very rough spot. Oh, gets the matching. No combo though. Another lease on life, but the grid break off of the J6C. Are we gonna route into infinite worth? Yes, we are. Will it be enough to kill with the added extra 10%? Oh, so close. And a very aggressive 2A Abari, but Kato's just willing to block it. And a big oh. grid break for Lena here. Now, won't be enough to kill off of this single hit right here, but should put them both into a one-touch situation. Oh my god, they actually have like the same health. Okay, neither player bites. Vorpal cycle to Catalyst. Plays real slow there. Doesn't commit to a J6C. First time we've seen that. And 
holding my breath right now. This is, this I'm is holding incredibly my breath. Like, just the constant back and forth. Both these players playing very patient, and Lena knows that they can just lame it out if they can, but Kato is able to actually steal the life differential right here, even though his totals are still one touch away for both players. Oh my god, the patience. Another Vorpal cycle to Catalyst. Oh my god, ends up getting the Bato slash. We are going to a game number five in that nail biter. Oh, just that slight delay right there. The slight change up for pressure to catch Catalyst, trying to just get a, a walk forward to close that distance a little bit more. Perfectly went into Lena's favor. Catalyst taking a second. Oh, you have to. it all comes down to this. I mean, you have to take a second up. Well, I, 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 I would, right? Like, you know, as, no. as you're saying about like ice it out, just like being like, wow, that was incredibly tense. You got to let that heart rate go down. You can't go into these sets with too high of a BPM. Uh, I'm pressing Alt F4 if that happens to me. I'm not waiting for anything. Yeah, but that's why you're in the booth and Kato listens in the loser's finals. That's true. <laughs> that's true. I was going to say something else, but I'll leave it for after the broadcast. The J6C counter hit yet again. How many rounds have we seen start with a J6C counter hit? Um, I think we've seen probably close to a dozen. We'll probably see a dozen more just on today's various undernight games. Not even in this tournament. <laughs> it is Jesus. such a good option. Jesus. <laughs> The Vitatsu there, counter hit, doesn't get the combo, but the grid break throw, not enough to kill. One, literally anything, any 5A, anything with the throw. Lina not teching, Catalyst yet again. Set point. Oh, we've seen this happen before. We see if they can bring it back into their favor again. All right, that's the connection. Ooh. Yo, the flip actually getting the last hit of the slash, which is very important because that gives you the knock, the untech state that you need to continue the combo. Great stuff, Lina gets another hit. Potential final game, final round on the line. Oh, big overhead right here. So should be able to close it out. Won't have to spend the meter. No, they won't. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. And gonna lose the turn. cycle off this as well. But no, we find that Carp 2A to connect. And Alina tying it up both these players at match point. No meter on the side of Lina. Could come into a could come into clutch. Oh, the hit confirmed from Catalyst. The 660 does connect. Gets another hit confirmed. Great stuff. And the Vorpal cycle. Oh my God, what a hit confirmed! Bates out tries to get with the 60. No stand tag from Lina that time. I'm just holding it right now, dealing with everything that's going to come through. Trying to wait. Trying to react for it. Charges the cycle once again. Be able to secure it. Gonna see another 6C into a CS right about now. No, we're oh just gonna God. find a hero. All it takes is one. Any hit will kill. Another throw, potentially the 2A connect. Doesn't believe, but when it all comes down to it, J6C finds another grid break. And Catalyst in the final game, final round scenario, runs it back. 3, 2. Claim the code. Please go to the match arena. Claim a code. And if you, you know, season of giving. If you are willing, please do be generous and give some of the players money for giving you the show on this Saturday night. But we are here. Grand finals for under night two here for TNS number 29. Tennyson on the winner side. Catalyst on the loser side. Let's get it. Let's get it indeed right here. Tennyson already starting off with that aggression early up and immediately crowd shielding, expecting a quick tech into, a, into something like a DP or an Abare to come from Catalyst, as we've been seeing a lot in previous games. But... Tannison just knows, like, hey, if I can keep up my tempo and you get to play my game, it's gonna be the it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be exactly what I want, and we'll see it here and we'll see it on the next wake up. Are we gonna, are we gonna spend it though? Oh no, go for the double circle, get the Oki. 720 to get the good Oki. Stand shield gets the Tatsu out. The CS is gonna lead into a full confirm and the side switch. Yeah, and this is what Kato is needing to try to make this comeback, right? Just go for these more obtuse and wild options. Uh, fighting the throw right here. Once again, showing, hey, I'm the grappler this time. J6C block, but we're still safe. We're still keeping the pressure going. A Tatsu's now coming out of the pressure. It's something we haven't seen from Kato yet. Oh, another A Tatsu, but the 1A is going to work out for Tannison taking the first round. Woohoo! J6C, work it out on a good tech once again. Third time. Nope, J6C. It's a it's a great gap closer, and it like just do, while being bigger, it's gonna be way more effective at more ranges. Back tech. 
We do have the Vorpal Cycle. That's the one thing Catalyst did have over Lina in that matchup is that he was winning the Vorpal Cycle more often than not. And that comes into play because you build a whole lot more meter and you can cancel with the with CS. But the FF is going to work out for Tannison right now. What are we going for? Yeah, showing that Rock is stronger than Scissors right now. Oh, tried to catch the overhead, but was a little too early on it. So Kalos gets quick tech and a quick punish. Yeah, the stand shield there for the JC. Tries to go for something freaky. The parry there. The Tatsu is going to win, but the Tatsu is going to anti-air too. Square hole. <laughs> with Tatsu, with Tatsu. Sometimes, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Ooh, I was still plus. Kaedalus gets a great hit here. Running off to an early lead. Nice tech. Oh my god, he's getting away with B Tatsu, no cancel so many times. People are respecting the potential to cancel the EX Fireball. Punish. Big sick C right here, but we can't finish that combo right now, so we instead take a cheeky little reset. Guarantee the Bye, cycle. Baby. Yep, Sivo into the EX Fireball, into the infinite work. And game number one is going to go to Catalyst. Once again, using that momentum from the previous set, being able to, you know, have that bigger upset, uh, like, uh, matchup-wise. And then immediately coming to Tannison, who you're now have, getting to fight an infighter. You get someone who wants to play the Kotsky ranges. Yippee! <laughs> Yippee! Yeah, Catalyst definitely... You know, the aggression from Akka definitely makes it harder for Wald to interact, especially, you know, frame data wise, also having a close range projectile, because Wald does need some time for his normals to come out to actually delete those projectiles. It's red beat, but we still take those. We'll get tossed back into the corner here. We're mashing. We woke up mashing. Tannison with the great meaty. Gonna get that hit. Not spending any meter on it. Yeah, Yield, has but... to cancel. Yeah, great recognition of the green shield right there. The Nickelodeon slime coming out to allow them to find these command grabs. Immediately get the cycle for a one more touch situation. And Tannis is going to take this round. Yeah, that was great stuff there. The, di the discipline, the shielding as well. Catalyst realized on that Butatsu that they were going to have to cancel. Get, get rid of both of those. Thank you. Great to not get grid broken right there, right at the last second. But you still got opened up afterwards. And Tana really going up to go for some delay techs here. Has to hold that fireball. Woke up right into it. Another throw from Catalyst. Oh, yeah. 2C is going to catch the shimmy. It's actually massive. Tries to go for the purple cycle. Flick ends up getting a DP after, anyways. Everything coming up. Tanison. What ender are we going for? 5AB. 5AB. Uh, once again, Tannison really prioritizing, like, just trying to shut you down from doing anything crazy on a wake up by just being very proactive against it. Catch yeah, with a double overhead. Oh my god, again, the J6C on block, and Tannison yet again caught with another 2A after, but the 360A is gonna get it, and it is gonna be enough to kill 1-1. One, one. Tannison seeing that situation come up like quite a few times for Catalyst, like, versus characters across the board. When you get into that weird scramble situation, they're very, very, like, committed to going for TKJ2C, and so Tannison was ready and prepared for it, just waited, waited for it to come out, and punched it. Yeah, really great stuff there. The, I mean, that is the, the Tannison discipline coming into effect. I mean, it's just one player is so aggro and the other player is so not. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see, you know, what, uh, what, what thought process will take them further in this. But Catalyst and Tannison are both tied up 1-1. Catalyst did come from the loser side, so uh -oh. they do need to win a couple more than just three in this set. Close it out. Yeah, a whole lot of games still potentially to be played. That's a great hit, though, for Tannison. And the Vorpal Cycle as well. Uses it right there to build a little extra meter. Halo, Red Beat. Oh, a lot of Red Beats and a lot of Grid Breaks. We'll just immediately get that cycle back. Charge with the VO. We got clipped from the Sea Tatsu, but, you know, I'm not too worried about it. What is happening? Oh, hey, we matched there with the 2C. No, we dropped another combo. That's like the eighth in a row from both players. 
it's it's the the hallmark identification of high level under night play is not a single combo is finished. Yeah, so you know we're we're at the top end of our player base. It's sort of we've reached the top end of the player base. The shield there goes for the grit dust in response to the 360C. You love to see that. Saw the shield, but the J6C over the 22X. Tatalus in control of this set right now. Really threading the needle right there, but Tannison. You know, putting putting that needle to the side right there, and immediately catching up with the grab. But a six C after the CS is going to be a huge starter. Yeah, this does so much damage. And do we want to put a little extra meter on top of it? No, we don't. Four point four VO off of me. We do get the Borple cycle. Thank you, Dagger, for the five dollar twenty five cent contribution to the Mazarino. Get away from me! But don't get away from the Mazarino. Playing those cards is cool there. Perfect. 3D out of the 2A. Put yourself in the corner though. Is it worth it? And the assault jump into the 2A. Tennyson was not ready. And the grid break off of the 3D. Catalyst one game away from a bracket reset. Catalyst looking so, so confident right now. Like I've, I've watched a lot of Catalyst's game plan. They're definitely like, you know, one of those people who like grinds these net play tournaments more than your average person. And this is. This is some of the most confident gameplay I've seen from them in a while. I I cannot read your name because it is in Japanese, but who gave the four dollar and twenty cent donation? Hold on, I can read his name. Here it comes. Never mind, I can't read that name. Yeah, it's it's too many characters for me to like try to translate in like two minutes. So, uh, but looks like we are just going in straight into round. Uh, you know, trading this game even. So, Kato is keeping the momentum up. Uh oh. Uh-oh, it begins the momentum into the potential bracket reset. Hey, oh, but, no. But you know what Tannison got there? Tannison got 70 meter that they can now go into this round. It's all they wanted. Oh, no tech. Oh, dude, that 2B has grip broken twice now off of that same situation. Up. Good text out for Tannison, but we'll just see us. Cato's keeping a turn. We want more. These grabs looking so good right here. Great shield from Tannison to try to space them out. And we're blocking this match ring six speeds, but we're not teching these throws. Oh, but we're teching into a doubles, a 720A off of just raw tech. The shield, though, it ends up working out for Tannison. Not dead just yet to the grasp of Akatsuki. Yeah, still showing plenty of signs of life, even up those life totals, and we'll catch him once more with a little uh -oh. reset, but we don't finish it. Uh -oh. Tannison needs to find a big opening here, and they find it. Nope. <laughs> Tries to concentrate at the stage. Not going to work out. We are in the final round of this game number four. Potential bracket reset on the line or a potential game five with that run up 2C is going to end up working out for Catalyst. Push to the corner with the x -Tatsu. Yes, we are. We'll make sure that they can guarantee the cycle as well with that charge. Tannison just blocking out and eventually getting grid broken here. Not blocking anymore. The question is, do we VO? <laughs> No, I think they're gonna hold it. They're just, they're trying to save that meter because they know that they need to try to add that damage up where they can. Catalyst though, gonna add it up here off this routing. Should build right into almost 200, but we'll close it out here into a reset. In true undernight fashion, we are gonna be here late into the night. Catalyst resets the bracket, three, one. Maybe Tannison, no, just going right into it. Doesn't need to take a break at all is going to try to find a way to get through the the barrage that is Akatsuki pressure. Catalyst is well. Both rounds they won were perfects. He's just the best. Just that guy? Yeah. Just that guy. All right. Taking a small break, but here it comes. Grand Finals reset. Three wins is all that separates one of these players from taking home this week's TNS. Has Catalyst won a TNS yet? I think he has. Yeah, it's okay. I, I feel like he has. I feel like he had to. Just w with the, the number of times that he's entered that. Like, yeah, I feel like right, at right? some point it had to come across. Obviously, I don't have all the brackets in front of me, but um, I feel like 
you know, if, if we do the same thing, if, if we get the TNS 100 for Undernight, we can do the stats. Yep. We can figure yep. out who's doing what. We'll have to see, you know, if we can get to that point. But right now, Tannison is just trying to get the point across that, hey, I didn't want to reset. I wanted to win. The space 4B is going to catch the normal, and we are going to put some meter. Never mind. No, I think it's reasonable to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. CS as well, be that meter efficiency. But I like that. Like, save the meter to go into the next round, because, like, meter is very important. And if you can, you know, afford to give two more touches while still potentially securing these rounds, like, take that meter where you can. The shield again with the crowd shield works up for Tannison. Oh, I don't know what route that was, but hey, we get another chance for a combo. Never mind. No, okay. but we, we will hear because Rock is coming out from downtown. Oh, again, a drop with the fade back. JC, game number one of the reset going to Tannison in a very quick fashion. Not a drop, a drop opportunity. We're right there for Tannison. True. All right. Cadal is thinking right now. Just trying to be like, okay, I was able to get 3-1 before. How do I do it again? How do I how do I close out the set? How do I change my game plan to beat these adaptations? Because now Tannison, I feel like, is playing at like the the perfect middle ground tempo that he would need to be for this set, right? Like he's not meeting Cadalus's activeness, but he's also not playing that full defensive style that led him into getting into this reset. Tries to interact with the fireball, not going to be able to get it, but now we're back on Catalyst's favorite stage. This is the power up right here. We're in the observatory. He's observing the future. Yeah. He's observing that grid gauge disappear for Tannison. Bro, oh, man. Oh, man. Do it again. Once more. Do it again. Oh, man. Again. Another perfect off of the back of so many throws from Catalyst. His throw timing is so hard to find right now, and that is going to be a full confirm with the EX Fireball. It's the classic technique. Sometimes you strike him, sometimes you throw him. Catalyst is making that work out great. Another huge grid break throw. Who's the grappler in this situation? Uh, it's Catalyst. Can yeah, you help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, 100%. Oh, the A Tatu is going to counter hit it. Holy! What a fast round! 18 seconds to tie up the set 1 1. Jesus! Catalyst does not want to allow any momentum to drop. Because once we see, once they're able to, to, to get those wheels spinning, they do not stop. Um. Huh? Huh? Um. Huh? 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 This way! What? Are you familiar with Tannison's Mika? I know that he's played Mika before. Yeah, I like didn't think players, it yeah. was a tournament character, but no way. I think he is decided, hey, I can't handle with these slower buttons versus Catalyst's tempo and Catalyst's pressure. And if you're going to bring out the wild card, you might as well do it in the reset. Oh, the punish. No, to be too far to go into the, I guess, 5B afterwards. Mm -hmm. Blocks right now, just kind of dealing with this. And it, like, how does Tannison's Mika deal with this? How do they get out of the situation? Because right now, they're just willing to play defensive, trying to use Mika Tornado, but it's not going to connect out. Kalos is going to find these routes to be even a little bit more efficient because Mika does have a little bit of that lower health than one. Oh, that throw is gonna kill Catalyst. Another round. Hey, for your, uh, for your content creator right now, we get a Mika on the thumbnail. I uh, technically you can. You can put Mika in the title too. Yeah. He's here for one round. All right, gets the finish. Three point six, not too bad. Higher end for Mika damage. Oh, give me that. Oh, baits out the no. Doesn't believe in the hit. Okay, Mika's a or, Mika away. Mika missiles away. Nice two oh, A. Maybe that's maybe that's part of the change. Having an actual mashable A normal. I think that is important, right? Like being able to like play a character who has kind of real normals could potentially make it better. But Catalyst is still playing very confident. Doesn't look like anything has changed so far. But a 360 C will change it. Oh, 
<laughs> Wait, no, he did it wrong. He doesn't. He doesn't, does. He know how to play the mini game. Oh no, I don't think he does. Do you know how to play? The, oh, he's dead. I don't uh -oh. think he knows how to play the mini game. Uh oh. Into the eyeworks. <laughs> no. Her 360C has two points in which you can press any attack button, and it'll do extra damage. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does, but Tannison not able to... Are they going to switch off? Back to what? Nope, they're... We're committed! They want, they want Mika on that graphic. We're committed! Put Mika in the title! <laughs> Alright, let's see if Tannison can make this work. Kalos is now sitting at only two rounds away from winning this tournament, from taking TNS this week. So we'll have to see if they can keep that up. Or Tannison can use this as a big comeback, but you're getting grid broken thrown. It doesn't matter what character you're on, that's going to happen to you. All right, in the corner. Oh, oh tries to mash immediately. Yeah, great stagger, five A's there. And once again, we're mixing them up and you green shielded the J2C. You got grid broken once again, sitting at a pixel. And Catalyst is just dominating the mid screen right now. Yeah, wow, the spacing. One round away, the Mika pick not coming in clutch, just like her balance in this game. Woo, oh, 5 BB! Gets a nope. stagger run up 2A, but doesn't believe. Yeah, it's it's that like non willingness to commit and be ready to like continue with Mika, which I think is like where Tamison's mostly struggling right here. But oh, Mika I've Tornado gonna anti connect. Yeah, it's like one of the best anti airs in the game has so much frame data for it. Now, this is relevant. Does Kanalis know how to interact with Mika Mr. Super well? Because uh, does Tamison even know how to set it up? That is also true. I, I but, think that's the, the first question. It's like the chicken and the egg. But I saw in that last interaction, like, they weren't even, like, attempting to shield on the Mika Missile stuff. And Mika is a character that, like, has a bunch of these gimmick mobs that you're not fully prepared for. It's so dangerous. Kratos doesn't even need it as, like, quickly close that out. Take it 3-1 in our grand finals reset.